Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's author reading and writing tip is from Donna Morrissey. Welcome, Donna. Hi, Crystal. Thank you. So Donna, oops, I'm like, I'm going to put that up there. Donna will be reading from her memoir. Look. So Donna, before you read, could I ask why you've chosen to read this particular passage? I'm going to read a section. Um, this is a, just a little piece from well, our mom was doing chemotherapy. She lost all of her hair. And uh, it was such a poignant moment for all of us, you know, because it really brought, it brought her illness into the concrete for us. And we could see the physical effects of it with her hair loss. And uh, I, I, it was just when I was reading, when I was writing it, it was, it was one of the passages that made me cry. And because yeah. it touched me so deep. And so why wouldn't I want to share that misery with everybody, you know? <laughs> So I'm just going to read that little piece um, okay. about my mom and my two sisters. And we're all in my sister's bedroom. And my sister Karen is, who's the hair cutter in the family, as well as the musician singer. So here we go. Here we go. Okay. Mother sat dully in the chair. Karen had sat in the middle of Wanda's bedroom. Karen wrapped a towel around mom's shoulders as Wanda and I perched on the bed, fidgeting. Hair, it is everything. It is a woman's cloak. It is her brooch, her favorite color, her hope for a better tomorrow once the perm is set and the rollers are out. It is her armor. Snip, snip. A piece of mother fell to the floor. Snip, snip. Another piece of her fell. Karen's fingers trembled and a lock of hair she'd lifted slipped from her fingers. She lifted it again, awkwardly holding the scissors for a better angle. Snip, snip. I felt faint and lay across the bed. Wanda, holding a multicolored silk scarf in her hands for mom to wear afterwards, quivered as though frightened with each snip of the scissors. Snip, snip. Mother's face was pinched now, as though she sucked on something sharp. And I turned away, looking through the window at a bird fluttering onto the windowsill. Snip, snip, snip. Oh, Mom. Karen ran her hand tenderly over our mother's scalp. Here, feel it. It's right smooth and warm. Looks just like Sinead O'Connor. Who the hell is that, said mom. <laughs> her grumpy tone belied the softening of her mouth as she brushed hair off her shoulders and a snippet fell onto her foot. She nudged it off as though it were dirt. And Wanda half sobbed and Karen spoke hard through trembling lips. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. That's who she is. That's not good enough for you. Yes, mine now, said mom. And I knew she needed anger just then. She needed it as a crutch as she rose from her chair and started towards the mirror on the wall. Her eyes were sooty dark against the pallor of her skin and the white of her scalp. Please don't look. I pleaded silently. Please don't look and see the brick and mortar of your worn down house. Don't see blood and skin over bone, but hear instead the beating of your heart with this primal rhythm, heralding your entry into time and waiting now to herald your return home. Your bald head and crippled arm and shorn chest are nothing compared to your humble true self. The self that will forever resonate through the hearts of those who love you. She stopped before the mirror, emitted a small gasp, and stepped back as though the sight were too much. Then she turned towards us, uncertainty clouding her eyes. Well, I'm still the same old bird, I suppose. Just lost a few feathers, she said. 
And Karen laughed. I laugh. Wanda gave another half sob, and Mom pulled a scar from her hands. Give me that. I covers it. It's fierce. Donna, go get the car. We goes and gets that wig. And that was our mom. Oh, you're going to make me cry this morning. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Donna. Thank you, Krista. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. we're both all weeping. What a way to leave, everyone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, that's quite an excerpt. And it is an incredible novel. <laughs> oh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> sorry, Donna. No, thank you for your compassion. Oh, oh dear, yeah. I didn't know I was going to cry this morning. <laughs> so I, what I will do is I'll take a step back. And Donna, your book is also about your incredible journey to becoming a novelist. We have so many writers out there who this is their dream. What advice do you have for them? Write your story. It, don't think about what will happen to it or where it will go or publishers or agents or any of that. Just write your story. It's the most important thing that you have that is yours. It's your story. Write it. It wants to be in the concrete is your philosopher's stone. Write it. Oh, I love that. That's wonderful wisdom. So writers, write your story. Yeah. Donna Morrissey, a big thank you for that powerful reading that I'm still recovering from and, <laughs> and also for your wisdom and um, wishing you a happy holiday season and all of the best with your memoir, Pluck. And we look so forward to um, your, your next one as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Yes, thank you so much. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs>